Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you. Yes, you the person who is just looking so goddamn beautiful today that I had to stop this video and mention it. Ah. You look good, mate. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than <laughs> Easy Logic for their suggestion of video games that play kind of like movies. Now, obviously, I've done my usual YouTube twisteroo on the subject and I've come up with a good idea of video games that should have been movies. Because after all, with the Sonic 2 movie that's doing the rounds at the moment, what better time is there to celebrate the beautiful marriage between video games and cinema? Oh God, they're about to intersect. James, cut away. We can't show this. Oh, because as video game budgets balloon to almost Mr. Creosote levels in the current day and age, so too do their ambitions. As time has moved on, many a video game has mined deep into the realm of the cinematic in the hopes of being seen as art alongside their silver screen counterpart. But with so many video games taking a step forward towards this cinematic approach, there comes a point where you have to throw your hands up in the air and say, well, why won't you just a bloody film? So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that should have been films. And before anyone says anything about my thoughts on these games, maybe inferring that these games are bad, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that maybe the medium could have been different and could have been better for the game and the franchise overall. But you know what? Let's get on with this list. You know the draw by now. Say hi to me here in the live chat and let's get on with it. Number eight, LA Noir. With Team Bondi sinking a sizable portion of their budget into their facial capture technology, which would allow players to see the lie, a lot was riding on LA Noir. A lot of pressure was on them to deliver the crime capered goods and in that one area that one facial recognition area they definitely succeeded but the rest of the game <laughs> because while looking for facial ticks and sweaty brows was a novel and interesting feature the rest of the title did feel like it was dragging a heavy load to keep pace as the gunfights often felt clunky and the very world around you felt empty and devoid of anything truly interesting to do this is an almighty shame because the tale on show here really is one for the ages and one that fits perfectly with the noir film genre it's got everything corrupt cops scandals murders and of course betrayal and a very depressing dour ending but unfortunately all of that was set to the backdrop of driving 50 miles an hour around cardbox city Ooh, delally i love this this is great mm -hmm, great fun i mean come on guys you actually hired actors for this game and then painstakingly digitized them so why not use the exact same cast and shoot a big budget movie instead and likely you wouldn't have had a massive fallout with rockstar and had to deal with their crunch culture so yeah making la noir into a film probably would have been better for everyone involved Number seven, F-Zero Climax. So I know what you're thinking to yourself by now, James, that why the hell would you choose F-Zero Climax to turn into a movie? Surely this game's story is about as deep as space cars go zoom zoom, right? Well, wrong, James, you idiot. I'm sick and tired of you trying to interrupt me on these things. I'm sick and tired of it, Jazz. Don't even, don't even try and get involved. I'm sorry, Jazz. I apologize, James. That was a bit out of line. But yes, the point still stands that, Jules, you're an idiot. Why are you talking about this game, you small-eyed toad? Well, the joke is on you, my friend, because actually my eyes are normal sized. It's just that my head is absolutely massive. I mean, look at it. And secondly, because deep within this pixelated handheld game is a story worth telling on the big screen. Plus, I mean, let's face it, F-Zero Climax is the weakest game in this franchise, but only because of the fact that every other entry into the franchise is an absolute banger. And plus, plus, because the world needs more F-Zero. So come on, give me this. So the story in question centers on a brand new cast of characters, one of which is Rick Wheeler, who admittedly debuted in the prior GB game, but truly takes center stage here as he dons the mantle of the new Captain Falcon. This moment could provide the entire drive of the movie, seeing Rick grow up watching the original Captain as a kid, mastering racing himself, and then finally continuing on the Captain's legacy. Plus, 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 tell me that I'm wrong here if this took any notes out of the absolutely almighty masterclass film that is Redline, then you would have an animated film that would do absolute gangbusters, look utterly amazing, and feel as fast as it did on the silver screen as it does on your little handheld game device. Number six, Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of Kuma. Ah, this game, eh? What a 
disaster piece. So, for those of you not in the know, and quite possibly for those now looking for a copy of this game, seeing as the IP that it's based on is quite literally the coolest thing going, Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of Kuma was a title so unanimously hated by critics and fans that the devs out and out apologised for its existence before then deleting digital copies of it from every single storefront possible. Yes, it was that bad, and yes, I have played it. However, what truly sucked about the entire experience was that there was actually a brilliant story here, yet was just one so covered in total and utter horse <coughs> The narrative picks up after the first season, with Kuma seeking revenge against Afro. His hatred for the titular character stems from the fact that Afro killed the pair's master in order to take the number two headband from him in order to challenge the number one and avenge his father. This tale of revenge fits beautifully next to the wider, cyclical nature of violence that Afro finds himself in, and to have to murder his childhood friend not once but twice is one that would make for a tragic and emotional tale in equal measure. As a film sitting alongside the other animated media in the franchise, it would have allowed fans another opportunity to delve into the cyber Wild West style of this IP. Instead, we just got a lukewarm dollop of nothingness slammed on a plate that tasted like what could have been. <sighs> Number 5. Mega Man Legends Now, I won't lie to you here, the only reason that I'm really putting Mega Man Legends on this list is because of the fact that I want more people to know that Mega Man Legends exists, because it is a game that makes me say, who boy! Unironically, it was a real break from the Mega Man formula, came with a beautiful new coat of paint, and tried to push forward in new and innovative ways. So of course, it died a commercial death. Oh, the uh, the two thumbs seal of approval is back. Yay! Off, off. Uh, only this is on a bad thing. Why get down? Now, before I bemoan that this game was a gem that was unfairly buried, there is one point of contention that many had with this title that I do have to concede didn't help in the slightest. The bloody camera controls. In a world of ropey, slippery, and clipping camera angles, Mega Man Legends sits right up there with Drake of the 99 Dragons. And I did not need to think about Drake and the 99 Dragons. And for many, this was the sledgehammer that broke the camel's back, meaning that they never truly got to immerse themselves into this charming world. Now, as a film, this would obviously remedy this key issue, while also allowing us more time to get to know the wonderful cast of villains in the form of the Bond family, and allow for kid-friendly action to play out on the big screen which you just know that fans would eat up. And here's the big twist of this list, the uh, evil finger temple of doom as it were. I'm not saying that these games here should just be turned into films and then never be made into video games, because what would happen here in this alternate reality is that Mega Man Legends, the film, would go on to massive critical acclaim, and then you'd make a video game about it, and people would be ready for the dynamic switch in gameplay. And thus, it would sell gangbusters. That's right, Jules, I've saved the industry once more. Huzzah! And now I fly away. Whee! Number four, anything by David Cage. Okay, so let's be honest here. David Cage is a man who is clearly just trapped in the wrong industry because whatever project that he puts out always seems to come with the underlying message of, please, for the love of God, let me make a film. I say this because all of his projects possess a cinematic focus which often comes at the detriment of any actual gameplay. I mean, think about it. At most, in titles like Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls, all you really do is move a character from one space to another and any action within is presented in QTE form. It's just a series of decisions taking you from one admittedly beautifully created set piece to another, and when the term plays like a movie is often thrown about with these projects, that is a clear sign that maybe somebody should just give them an actual camera and crew to work with. Now, this isn't to slight the games in question, but you have to admit that the air quotes gameplay of these titles is so minimal and sometimes feels so tacked on that it can sometimes take away from the stories being told, especially when they're used to pad out the runtime. I mean, is there any one that the terms full movie are amongst the highest search things when it comes to his project, people just want to see what it is, and that is a movie. Number three, Death Stranding. Okay, 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 so hear me out on this one. I actually quite like what Death Stranding is and what Hideo Kojima was trying to do with this project, but I definitely think that this should be a film because it would mean that he would have to tell a story more concisely. I mean, come on, did we really need a two-hour cutscene at the end of the game? That is a literal movie in itself, and the repetitive missions in the third act really did feel like things were being phoned in somewhat. So, what about we take this massive whale, cut out all the blubber, and fashion a two, maybe three-hour movie? But that's it, Hideo, you go on any longer and we're coming after you. And use all of the wonderful characters and the rich world that's being created to tell a more focused tale. And all the pieces are there as well, a man looking to rebuild humanity, an 
ever-present threat of very explosive death and giant BTs that could make for entrancing set pieces. Chuck in your baby buddy cop pal and you've got a movie with heart, danger, and also wouldn't overstay its welcome by about 10 hours. Number 2. Lost Odyssey so, after completing Lost Odyssey on the Xbox 360, I sat back and exhaled deeply before commenting, Ah, well that was the most fun I've ever had with such a boring game. And you know what, that is true, because at its core, Lost Odyssey has a great story to tell, but does so in the most padded and bland way possible. With endless reams of dialogue repeating the same story points over and over, plus enough filler to make some Naruto arcs feel concise, Lost Odyssey dragged itself out for at least 10 hours more than it should have. Now, I get that JRPGs are usually a long-form storytelling format, but there were so many moments where you could just feel that all the gameplay department had to work on from the writing team was apathetic shrug for two two hours that was written on a post-it note. The combat system might have been nicely conceived, but it was relied upon too much to the point where battling felt like a chore come the end of the game. Now on the big screen, this tale of amnesiac immortal heroes of corrupted civilizations and of course mighty monsters probably would have done pretty well, but on the 360 all it really felt like was, we've got Final Fantasy at home. Big bang of energy like that. Nobody wants that. And number one, we happy few. Now, before I tear this game apart, I do have to concede the fact that a lot of uh, tweaks and patches and the expansive DLC that was added to this game post-launch have made we happy few into a very enjoyable world to explore. But when it came to its launch, there was only one word to describe this game, and that was... <laughs> Disappointing. The disconnect between the outstanding setting of a pilled up swinging 60s Britain clashed incredibly hard with the tried, tested and let's face it boring survival and stealth driving mechanics. Which is such a shame because the lead in marketing for this game had me falling in love with the style and eerie tones. It was like the big book of Bioshock being read to me by a cockney, alright Goovna, let me tell you about Rapture. There's also a great story at play here too, with our hero Arthur trying to find out what happened to his brother and indeed the world around him, and the flashes between what those see on the drug Joy versus their reality could have been used to great effect in a film, as it was one of the few factors that really worked in the game. It's just a shame then that the actual gameplay of We Happy Few just sapped the very joy out of the experience and was so janky in places that many didn't even finish it. So yeah, this definitely should be a film because there is a great story to tell here. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that should have been movies. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your suggestions for next week's episode, as I would love to hear from you all. But if you want to chat to me in the meantime, you can go over to Twitter and type in at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and you'll find your lovely egg daddy over here. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's me spelling it out again, completely wrong. <laughs> where I do all of my board game content. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you are treating yourself well, my friend, because much like the movies, Alien Ant Farm reference, you are the true star of the show here and you deserve love, happiness and success. This is not a tragedy, my friend. This is going to be a happy ending for everyone involved because you are a big ledge and you deserve all the good things in life. Don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Go out there and smash your life goals today because I believe in you and you need to believe in yourself as well. As well. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, massive love as always to James Dows for his editing work, and we'll see you soon my friends. Peace.